Hello, grade 10. This is our eighth online lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to continue our lesson, which is absolute value. So, uh, the last lecture, we identified what's the meaning of absolute value of any number. And we used the properties of the absolute value. And in this lecture, I'm going to use the interval uh, or finding the solution of absolute value in an inequality and represent it as an interval. And then we are going to uh, calculate the midpoint, the radius, and the length of the interval. Now I'm going just to make a quick revision for uh, what we have learned last week, and then I'm going to continue. So first of all, we have learned what's the meaning of the absolute value. And we said that the absolute value, it's the distance between 0 and the value x. So as you know, the distance cannot be a negative number. So that's why uh, we do the absolute value of the number. And the absolute value, uh, it's always a positive number. But the distance, for example, the, the value, it could be in the positive or in the negative uh, side but its absolute should be a positive number so and we said that uh, absolute of minus x is equal to, uh, to absolute of x and if absolute is equal to 0 then we have only one value which is x equals to 0 and then uh, we, we did examples and we said that absolute value of 5 is 5, absolute value of minus 5 is 5, so it should be positive number. And for the distance, we said that if I have absolute, for example, I'm going to take the example directly. So suppose you have... Um, I'm going to take that. Okay. If I have absolute x minus 3. So in this case, I have three conditions. If x is greater than 3, for example, 4, 5, or 6, then the answer is x minus 3. It stays as it is because it's, it's going to give me a positive number. If x is equal to 0, then uh, we, we solve, or, or if it's equal to 0, then we solve it x equals to 3. This is the only case where this absolute is going to have a 0 as a value. And if x is less than 3, suppose that x is 2 or 1, then I'm going to have a negative number. That's why I have to flip the numbers and it becomes 3 minus x. And we learned some properties of the absolute value. And we said that, for example, absolute x over y, it's absolute x over absolute y. We said that absolute of x, y is equal to absolute of x times absolute of y. So you can distribute the absolute value. And those were some examples of the properties. And now use the absolute value to calculate the distance between two points. So if I have, for example, absolute x equals r, then x is equal to r or x equals minus r. So the first thing you have to do is to isolate the absolute alone by itself equals to a number. Then you take two cases. So if I have absolute x equals to 4, this is the second example, then x equals to 4 or x equals to minus 4. But if I have x, absolute x equals to minus 2, this is impossible because we said that absolute cannot be a negative number. So always remember that you have to take two conditions. The first time the same number, the second time it's opposite, the same thing here. The first time it's equal to 5, the second time it's equal to minus 5. Even if I have uh, absolute equals to absolute, then the first time you take the uh, 2x plus 3 as it is, the second time you take its opposite. Now, before I start uh, solving absolute values in inequalities, I'm just going to remind you how do you graph inequalities or how do you represent uh, the interval or the inequality as an interval. So suppose you have um, open bracket. You use open bracket when it's strictly less than or strictly greater than. You use closed bracket brackets if you have uh, its E, uh, less than or equal, greater than or equal. I'm going to tell you what do I mean. Suppose you have x is strictly less than 2. 
x is strictly less than 2. So you use open bracket, as you can see, x is strictly less than 2, so it could be 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, or of all of these values to the left. But 2 is not included in my interval because it's strictly less than 2, so it's not or equal to 2. So you use open bracket, as you can see. And if you have x greater than or equal to 2, this is uh, what we have here is that 2 is included in my interval because I have or equal. That means 2, it could be a solution. So you use an, a closed bracket as you can see. So when you close this bracket over 2, that means 2 is included in my interval. But when you open the bracket on 2, that means I don't need 2 or 2 is not included in my interval. Let us try to solve. some inequalities and represent them as an uh, interval but always remember that in an interval you should first put the smallest then the largest what what do I mean let us start so suppose you, you look at this graph this is uh, it's less than 2 so it's from minus infinity till 2. How did we know that it's an open bracket around 2? Because 2 is not included in my interval, so we just put it open. And infinity, because it's, infinity is not a number that we know, it's, it should be open uh, bracket, as you can see. Okay, so always put the smallest first, which is minus infinity, then the largest, which is 2. Let us take another example. In this example, we have the values that are greater than 2. Is 2 included in my interval? Yes, because we closed we closed the bracket around 2. So this is represented, as you can see, it's 2 plus infinity. So the smallest first, then the largest. It's closed around 2 because 2 is included in my interval. And on infinity, it's always an open bracket. Another example, this is... It's between 4 and 9. So it's the, the solution, it's between 4 and 9. But 4 and 9, both of them are not included in my interval. That's why we used an open bracket. Now let us graph, then write the interval notation. X is greater than or equals to 5. So this is the axis. It's, this is 5. So x is greater than or equal to 5. So x is included in my interval. That's why we close around 5. And to write it as an interval, we start by the smallest, which is 5, and the largest, which is plus infinity. So 5 plus infinity. It's closed on 5, and it's open on plus infinity because it's not a number that I know. Now, x is less than or strictly less than minus 3. So, minus 3 is not included in my interval. So, it's less than minus 3, so it's going to um, minus infinity. So, we write it as minus infinity minus 3. And as you can see, we put an open bracket around minus 3 because I, it's not included in my interval. Now let us solve, then graph, then write the interval. So suppose you have uh, 3x plus 4 greater than 7, so 3x is greater than 3. x is greater than 1, so I'm going to draw the number line. x is greater than 1, so it's going to the right. So they are all the values or the set of interval or the set of the solution is all the values that are greater than 1, so everything to the right, so greater than 1. So 1 is not included in my interval, so it's an open bracket around 1, and it's open around plus infinity, so this is the interval notation. Uh, also here we have 4 minus 9k, it's greater than or equal, minus 4k plus 19, so I'm going to solve it first, so the variables to a side and the numbers to a side, and here I have minus 5k, that means I have to multiply the whole inequality by minus, so I'm going to get uh, 5k, and you flip the sign, so 5k less than or equal to minus 15, then k is less than or equal to minus 3. And now I'm going to graph 
this solution. So we draw the number line. X is great uh, is less than sorry and uh, less than or equal to minus three. So it's everything to the left. So from minus three till uh, plus infinity. But three is included in my interval because I have here or equal. So to write it as uh, an interval, we start by minus infinity, which is the smallest till minus three. It's open around minus infinity and it's closed around minus three because it's included in my interval. Also, this example, we have minus 5 over 3p uh, strictly greater than minus 10. So I'm going to do a cross multiplication. So I get minus 5p greater than 3 uh, times minus 10. So minus, v is, minus 5p is greater than minus 30. And now I'm going to multiply the whole inequality by minus. So I get 5p less than 30. Then p is less than 6. So we draw the number line. p is less than 6. And 6 is not included in my interval. So it's from minus infinity till 6. And it's open around 6. And now... I'm going to use what we have learned now in the absolute values. In order to solve absolute value of x is less than or equal to a, so if I have less than or equal to a, then the solution is x between minus a and a. <coughs> okay? <coughs> Sorry. If I have absolute value of x is greater than or equal to a, then here I have x is less than minus a or x is greater than a. We are going to have a lot of examples to understand this. So if I have x is less than or equal or absolute uh, value of x less than or equal to r, then x is included between minus r and r plus r. Of course, both of them are closed because I have or equal. And if I have absolute value of x is greater than or equal to r, then it's minus infinity minus r plus infinity uh, plus r plus infinity and we have union in the middle. Uh, we are going to do a lot of examples to understand this. Let us start. So, of course, absolute value of x is less than or equal minus 2. This is impossible because as if you are telling me that uh, less than minus 2, so every time you are going to get absolute value of x is less than, uh, for example, uh, minus 3, minus 2, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, which is impossible. But if for absolute value of x is greater than minus 2, this could happen because I have a positive value which is greater than minus 2. So the set of interval is minus infinity plus infinity. Because every time you are going to replace uh, x by a number, you are going to get a number which is greater than minus 2. So all the numbers are accepted. So the set of solution is minus infinity plus infinity. Now, as we learned here, if I have absolute value of x less than 4, then x belongs to minus 4 and 4. Minus 4 and 4, minus r and plus r, as we learned. But if I have absolute value of x plus 3 greater than 5, as we have here, so I have two intervals and they are separated by union. So minus infinity, minus 3, minus 5. Union minus 3 plus 5 plus infinity. I'm going to show you the steps. How do we solve this? So um, uh, let, But for, till now, I want you to know that if I have greater than a number, then we have two intervals separated by a union. How do we solve this? I'm going to uh, teach you later. I'm going to do an, an example. Uh, one thing that we use the interval for is to find the midpoint and the radius and the length of the interval. So at the midpoint or the center of the interval, if we have a, b, then the center is a plus b over 2. And the radius is b minus a over 2. But you have to keep in mind that these definitions remain valid for the open interval a, b also. But uh, every interval with midpoint 0, if we have, for example, minus 5, 5, so the same number, minus 5 plus 5, then um, the midpoint is 0. Okay? And the center is C minus R, C plus R. Okay? Now I'm going to do 
the uh, examples so minus 5 pi it's centered at 0 and the radius is 5 minus 4 10 is centered at 3 and the radius is 7 so, so you just apply those rules the center and the radius solve I'm going to solve uh, for equalities and inequalities so pay attention how do we do this Part A, 2x plus 3 equals 3. This is from the previous lecture. So we take the first time, 2x plus 3 um, equals 3 or 2x plus 3 equals minus 3. So the first time we take the same. The second time we take the opposite. So 2x equals 0, then x equals 0. Or 2x equals minus 6, then x equals minus 3. So the set of the solution is minus 3 and 0. The second, the second one also, uh, we have 5 minus 7x equal x plus 1. So the first time we take the same, the second time we do the opposite, and we solve the variables to a side and the numbers to a side, then we got x equals half or x equals 1. In part C, we have absolute 7 plus x equals minus 1, and this is impossible because an absolute value cannot be equal to a negative number. In part D, we have an inequality. We have 3 minus 2x is less than 5. So how do we solve this? The first time we take it less than 5, the second time we take it greater than minus 5. So pay attention. The first time we take it the same, the second time we do the opposite. What's the opposite of less than 5? It's greater than minus 5. So keep in mind that you have to take the opposite of the sign and the number. And you solve normally. How do you solve this? Um, minus 2x is less than 2, then x is greater than minus 1. You multiply the whole inequality by minus. 3 minus 2x is greater than minus 5, then minus 2x is greater than minus 8, and x is less than 4. So if you tell me that x is, less th is greater than minus 1 but less than 4, how do we represent this? It's between minus 1 and 4 and it's an open interval because we have um, we don't have or equal now let us continue And now we have <coughs> sorry, uh, absolute x minus 1 is greater than 1. As I told you, the first time you take the same. The second time you do the opposite, which is less than minus 1. And you solve the variables to a side and the numbers to a side. x is greater than 2, but x is less than 0. So in this case, you will have two intervals separated by a union. So you are going to get minus infinity till 0. Union, 2 till plus infinity and it's an open interval because we don't have or equal so uh, in the last one where we had less than we had uh, only one interval but in the second one where we have greater than we had two intervals separated by a union now uh, part f is very easy we take the first time equals to 5 or equals to minus 5 and you solve then the set of solution is 0 5 over 2 in part G, it's also easy. We take the first time 2x minus 1 equals to x, 2x minus 1 equals to minus x, and you solve, you are going to get two solutions, 1 and 1 over 3. In part H, you have absolute less than a negative number. As I told you before, this is an impossible case. In part I, we have absolute greater than 3. So the first time we take it greater than or equal to 3. The second time less than or equal to minus 3. And you solve normally. So you get x is less than or equal to minus 2. And x is greater than 4. And here you'll have two intervals. The first one, it's from minus infinity, minus 2. That represents that x is less than minus 2. And the second one represents x is greater than 4. And as you can see here, we have closed brackets or closed uh, because we have or equal. Now part um, j. 
absolute equals to minus 2 this is definitely impossible impossible because an absolute cannot have a negative number for part k um, uh, part k you take you have absolute 4 minus 3x equals minus 4x plus 1 you take it the first time as it is the second time the opposite and part l you have greater than or equal to 5 you can solve it by your own the first time you take it greater than or equal to 5 the second time you take it less than or equal to minus 5 and you solve it i wish you understood everything that was the end of, of our lesson of uh, absolute value